more human than human. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know why, but today of all days is like, uh, I just had vacation last week. I know. And I am, um, want to go back to bed so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, he's here. Don't don't say anything about him. Oh, I never liked you. <laughs> we can jump right into it. I'm recording. I'm smart enough to hit record immediately. Did yeah. I miss any funny Dave stories? You sure did. Like a good hour's worth. <laughs> so welcome to Night of the Comic. Idea you're recording in the dark. No, I just, I have black walls. Oh, that looks, yeah, that's cool. Because I'm fucking cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's inside the Bohemian Rhapsody music video. Spooky. He's a little silhouette of a man. Do you know, I don't know what they actually say during that song? Like, oh. Mama Moosh. Oh, those are. Moosh. Yeah. <laughs> those are names of uh, demons and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's why it's all mumbo-jumbo. Oh. But are you still on vacation? No, I'm back at work, so I got to, you know, I got to be out of here in time for that. What are you, what are you drinking? Work. Water. Heroin. Out of my... Mm. Pure liquid jungle, heroin. Jungle Cruise Enchanted Tiki Room glass. Oh, that's awesome. That's how I roll. <laughs> When I was a kid, my parents always used to make us go to the fucking tiki room. Yeah. With the fucking parrots. Oh, yeah. And I hated it. It was so boring, to, you know, <laughs> but my parents loved it. And so we would sit there for like a good fucking hour and watch these goddamn animatronic <laughs> parrots. <laughs> so I was you- like, you realize we're at Disney World right now. Like we could be like doing it anything right now you guys want to watch fucking parrots Uh. (laughs) how do you feel about them now do you feel the same way um well it's been savior it's been four years since the last time i went to disney world yeah did you do the tiki room then no i did not do you do it out of you don't go out of spite I made I made a quick line to the Dole Whips. That's about as cl- as close as I. Oh yeah, those are good. I I prefer an Orange Bird, uh, the mm-hmm. citrus uh, one. Uh, is that is that vegan? I know the Dole Whips are. Yeah. That's th- why I go I th- for those. I think it's vegan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dole Whip don't have dairy in them. What? I no. Th- I, I the Dole do not. Oh. No, there is a vegan's guide to Disney World navigating Disney World, and the Dole Whips are. A okay. Yeah, I bet you the orange ones are probably okay. You got to get the classic citrus swirl. You don't right. want you don't want the orange Dole Whip, but the citrus swirl that has citrus oh swirl. it has it has vanilla in it. It might be that one might have dairy in it. I don't know. Vanilla is a bean. You know. Yeah, that's true. It's not. It does. There isn't a vanilla animal. Well, they used to have a uh, one that was just the orange part. It, it's like that. It's almost like orange juice concentrates, like super tart. Yeah, I like tart things. Yeah, I like things that like tart things. I like that's why I like Jason. He's a tart. He sure is. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, before you came on, that's what that we were just calling you a tart over yeah. and over again. You goddamn son of a bitch! That guy yeah. is such a tart. A tart oh trauma. shit! I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you're listening to the audio version, Dave just removed his sleeves. <laughs> They're all Velcro. They yeah. just push, push, push them right off. It's like the swimmers before they they in the Olympics and they just yeah. fucking rip their shit off. <laughs> I have sleeves like that, just in case I'm in a situation like now. Right. You don't want to look like a fool. Sleeves. Yeah, that's right. And we have sleeves. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So I mean. What about that big Keaton news, huh? What? Michael Keaton. No, I didn't hear the news. He's passed away. No. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> Poor Michael Let's Keaton. Have a moment of silence. Dead. Dead. <laughs> dead. Dead. Keaton dead. Every time there's news, it's somebody's dead now. 
So uh, Michael Keaton is not dead. That's the good news. Yeah. There are reports that he might return as Batman. Really? It's not going to turn the, out to be a commercial where he plays Batman. like In the Flashpoint <laughs> movie. It's an Audi commercial. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I mean, if all, in all fairness, I'd still love that. Yeah. Well, every time you they know, announce the, that somebody's reprising a role, it ends up being in a commercial. For cars. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like, what if what if he was selling cottage cheese, you know, and he was like, I'm. I'd still be okay with Michael that. Michael Keaton. I was Batman, and now I'm. Hello, I am Michael cheese. Keaton, formerly Batman. <laughs> and I am a fan of cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Mesothelioma. <laughs> and it, Right there, just sparks another fifteen years of debate on social media. The greatest Batman ever, and he's selling cottage cheese. <laughs> he's swimming in a vat of cottage cheese. Oh, God. <laughs> so, what is this project that he is going to be Batman in? <laughs> Ezra Miller's Flashpoint movie. See, I'm out of touch on this. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, Flashpoint well, okay. is this uh, superhero, and he's like really okay, flashy. Okay. He's kind of like Liberace, <laughs> and he's got like seventeen pointer fingers. Oh, and they all have rings on them, <laughs> and he's just always flash pointing at people. And they're like, "Hey, stop pointing! <laughs> it's not polite." Yeah, but it's flashy. And then they, and then they call in Michael Keaton to save the day. <laughs> yep. So. Flashpoint was the movie or the comic book series that led into DC's New 52. Oh. It was the whole thing with, uh, you know, the Flash going back in time to save his mother. And if I'm being dead honest, it got so convoluted, I've forgotten which, which timeline was the real one. <laughs> if, Marvel gets know. like that, though, too, a little bit. Well, they did like maybe like six years ago, you know, their whole. Uh, well, yeah, now with the Secret Wars thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't. Who the hell knows what they did after that? Yeah. But the Flash, like, has the, like, his origin. I don't know if his mom died or if he, if she didn't die. I don't know. But the Flashpoint, just comic storyline, the whole point was that his big bad guy professor zoom or whatever said like hey surprise i went back and killed your mom or something and altered surprise! The timeline. <laughs> that's like one of those fallbacks for flash comics now is like anytime they did a big shocking story they'll just say zoom went back in the past and altered it uh when freddie said surprise i had this vision of someone popping out of a cake uh-huh that's what and i was going to really? step forward and i was like oh what if michael keaton popped out of a cake <laughs> in this commercial with cottage cheese and he says i killed your mom <laughs> you made me make a weird very, sound very dark return to the character <laughs> So the other thing with Flashpoint is like uh, the whole point is all of the DC universe is different. Like what happens if, you know, it's one of those butterfly effect things. If Barry Allen's mom survived or didn't survive, you know, what, what would happen to the DC universe? And one of the big ones was that Bruce Wayne uh, was killed in the alley and his father took up the mantle as Batman to like avenge his son basically he's like a punisher version of batman it's really like stupid. he uses guns and he uses guns and everything uh, i think that's really lame i think it's pretty <laughs> straightforward i really fucking hate it dave is in a real mood today huh i think we woke someone up cranky it, it would have yeah. been more interesting if like <clears throat> the pearl necklace that um mrs wayne was wearing became the new she's Batman. Dirty, she's very promiscuous with that pearl necklace of hers. You went blue. I was just going for something adorable like a a pearl necklace dressed up as Batman. But you made it into something dribbling out of the Batman suit. Sexy times. And I, I, I just don't like the, 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 the premise that to be a fucking Batman is inherent in their family's DNA. Like 
the dad, his well, family dies, so he hook. immediately jumps to, I'm going to dress up like a fucking bat and avenge my son. Yeah. They like, need that's a something you I mean, like, otherwise, what, it's just going to be a sad story of a kid getting shot. <laughs> I, I think that's a better story. <laughs> I get it. The internal logic is missing. <laughs> like the logic of how he became Batman doesn't make it doesn't make sense because he doesn't have like the the whole encounter and all that stuff. Yeah. So actually, we just the, have to forgive those things and just say, "Hey, yeah, point that's comic book stuff." Yeah. There was again a lot of crazy shit happening. There was a but as usual with comic books, there was a crazy amount of tie-ins. And everything, but my comic guy strongly recommended the Batman tie-in, and it is actually pretty solid. Because here's a minor spoiler: his mom turned into the Joker. Are you serious? Yeah, that's even dumber. And then well, she found the Juggernaut helmet. Great, actually. Really? Yeah, it's written by Brian Azriello and uh, Eduardo Russo, who did the 100 Bullets team, does that miniseries. Hmm. But. I don't know if that's the Batman they're talking about. If Keaton's going to play that Batman. Because, you know, again, there's like a whole different thing now. All of a sudden, Flashpoint's supposed to be, you know, because they did that crisis on Infinite Earths on television uh, earlier this year. Yeah, it seems it seems like a waste. It seems like if they're going to bring back Michael Keaton, he should be the Michael Keaton Batman. He should be the Batman. Sure. That was kissing Vicky Vale. <laughs> You know, yeah, like I, I don't disagree. Why else would you bring back Michael Keaton to play Batman if it's not that Batman? Mm. And then, like, if Tim Burton didn't have a hand in it, he would seem like he's out of place, too, right? Oh, I admit, like they're not going to let Tim Burton. I don't think Tim Burton would have any interest in this. I know, but if you you get what I'm I get what you're down saying, here, like he, it's uh, such a he was, inherently yes. Like and Bert and it has Batman. such an artistic singular voice that if anyone were else to touch that character that they developed together visually and you know like psychologically, yeah, he's, I guess. he's usually referred to as either Michael Keaton's Batman or Tim Burton's Batman. Yeah, like it just like Michael Keaton never played Batman outside of the 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 direction of Tim Burton. You know, so just to confirm, In the bedroom, you are a fan. You are a fan of that movie, right? I am, yeah, yeah. Both of them. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. Those movies are still movies that people get shocked that, like, I defend so... Yeah, I'm the same. Really? Why are they shocked that they don't think those movies are good? Well, because, you know, you know how everything goes. Once a movie or certain things get older, like, a new generation discovers them and tries to, like, nitpick them. Right. And, like, all that shit. And those movies are so great. Yeah. They prefer Val Kilmer. <laughs> I don't think anyone prefers Val Kilmer. Uh, Who's worse? Is it George Clooney or Val Kilmer? George Clooney is definitely worse than Val yeah. Kilmer. Yeah. Val Kilmer, in all fairness, actually didn't play a horrible Batman. I don't think I, I ever just, saw any of those movies. Really? You know, it's funny. I actually yeah. realized, I think it was when uh, Batman vs. Superman came out. And, you know, I was making fun of it. But then, like, it comes out, and I was like, all right, let's go see it. And, you know, my wife was like, I thought you were just making fun of the trailers. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, but we're going to go see it. Right. See, that's what they want. That's You're what like, they want. still got to know. Uh, by the way. I was like, you know, I've seen every Batman movie that's been released in my lifetime on opening weekend. Hmm. Uh, Joel oh, Schumacher died. Thing. He did, you, did die. Yeah. You saw that? Dead. Joel Schumacher dead. for real is dead. 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 We can say dead, dead for real. I do dead. find it a little bit uh, unfortunate that, you know, this guy dies and every headline says Batman movie directors. And it's like, he did some very good movies. Yeah. I love the Lost Boys. What else? Uh, falling Down. <laughs> oh, did he do Falling Down? Yep. Oh yeah, that's Blood, right, yeah, Blood Creek was pretty good. Um, yeah, that was actually a somewhat solid movie. He did Flatliners and Flatliners. Did. I saw Flatliners in the theater when it came out. Yeah, and I, I probably shouldn't say this out loud in a public forum, but when that movie was over, I was so fucking like hyped and jazzed. Like I was like, I just saw the best fucking movie ever made. It was, I was so at the time. It was awesome. 
<laughs> I mean, it's still, I, it's not a bad movie. There's no shame in what you just said, Dave. <laughs> there is a little bit. Did someone uh, flatliner shame it. you? I, I haven't seen it in decades. A decade is 10 years, right? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I haven't seen it in decades. So I, I, I you know. Yeah. But it, but you know, it like, made the, me like the, think about cinematography for the like first time and. I thought it was. Hey, the there's nothing wrong with that. It, you know, everyone's get their get their origins somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But you know, they did movie, especially specifically Batman and Robin, which is usually looked at as one of the worst movies ever made. Yes, I do think. Well, one, it does have a level of like that. Yeah, you can say that, but that movie is very easily to rewatch. Hey, you can pop that in any time, and I'm going to watch it. That's uh, Mr. Freeze, right? Wasn't that one? Yes. Schwarzenegger. Wow. It's, a fun, well, it's a fun movie. You know, there was like a famous thing where apparently he, uh, where Joel Schumacher apologizes. You're right, Dave. Are you watching a horror movie? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you high? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, maybe. Uh, that he apparently apologized for the movie in the audio commentary. Hmm. Of Batman and Robin, Aww. but he, I think it was more of an apology in that he was uh, kind of explaining how the movie was supposed to be a, like a tribute to Adam West Batman, and it didn't come across that way. It came across as just a really shitty parody yeah. of Tim Burton's Batman. Yeah, I was going to get into that because, I mean, it, it ran like literally consecutively after the Tim Burton movies. There wasn't much of a gap. Yeah. No, no, there was so no this gap. Was, it was you know, part this four was, in that movie franchise. Yeah, it was very much implied that, yeah, this is a sequel to those movies. And um, like I said before, I don't think I've ever seen any of the Joel Schumacher Batman movies. And I assume that they were just all by Joel Schumacher <laughs> from Val Kilmer to George Clooney. I to, did. I think did there's he, like uh, eight he, of them, right? He did both. He did, no, he both did two. Those? Oh, he did Batman forever and Batman and Robin. Okay. Um, yeah. And so what I will say about them is that I, you know, he seemed to like have a very strong visual style, you know, whether the content of the films are bad or not, I don't know, but like, for, you know, in, in the context of back then where, you know, the comics were called graphic novels and, and people weren't scratching their chin about the, you know, inherent intellectual content of, you know, a man dressed up as a bat saving the day. Uh, you know, all his gelled lighting and crazy angles makes sense. And then to hear you say that it's an homage to, you know, Batman 66 makes even more sense. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll credit him for that for sure. Um, he did the incredible it, shrinking woman too. With what's her name? Yeah, I don't know hey, that movie. Freddy. Sorry, name? I was uh, I was far away. I was uh, Lily Tomlin was in that one. Lily Tomlin, Charles Grodin. Right. Yeah. Uh, DC Cab. Do you remember that one with uh, Mr. T? No. Oh, that's a fun movie. If you've never seen it, uh, like if you look at his early movies, he did a lot of fun stuff. He did Saint Elmo's Fire. Mm-hmm. Um, he did a bunch of videos for NXS. Uh, he did a movie called Cousins I've never seen. Flatliners. Mm. Mm. As you said, Falling Down. The Client. You remember that? That John Grisham mm-hmm. was, uh, yeah. That yeah. was a big movie. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that was a movie. It was a big movie. When that movie came out, that was a big deal. He he directed the video for Kiss from a Rose. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That didn't shock me whatsoever. I mean, that was in his Batman movie. He, he directed A Time to Kill. Remember that? Objection, Do you think they honor. deserve to die, Mr. Your Haley? Honor. Answer Mr. the question. Buckley. Carly, they don't they answer deserve that question. To die? Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn it. No. No. Have you never seen that? No. Samuel I, I, Jackson. I, it sounded like a James Bond movie title. I've never seen a James Bond movie. A time it's to, actually a John Grisham movie. It's a John Grisham uh, movie. It's a it's a good one. Samuel is Jackson in it? is awesome in it. No. Is Tom Cruise in it? No. Uh, no. It's Sandra Bullock, uh, Matthew McConaughey, and Samuel Jackson. Uh, very solid movie. He did eight millimeter with Nicholas Cage. Really? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Does we, it? We talked about that's two episodes in a row, right? That we brought we up eight millimeter. We did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so weird that that like the the same person made eight millimeter that made Batman and Robin. Well, I guess 
technically, I guess the reason why they're putting those movies in his headline, though, is those are definitely his biggest. Well, well this isn't a headline. This is just his filmography. No, oh. I know. I'm saying like the Batman movies. Like he, he directed when you're reading them. Yeah, he directed Phone Booth. Yeah, that was a solid movie. That's a very good movie. That's uh, written by the was late Larry, Larry Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. Um, if Phone Booth is uh i just saw for the first time this year very good movie probably the best joel schumacher movie besides the lost boys that i can think of you know my controversial opinion i've said this to you before i'm not a huge fan of the lost boys that's uh, i don't know i feel like people are either hot or cold on it yeah I mean, like, it's fine. You know, I don't think it sucks or anything. It's just like, I've, I've seen it a handful of times. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to see. I, I think a lot of people our age won't admit it. Um, but it's, it's the twilight of the eighties. 100%. Thank you, Dave. If you were here, I would kiss you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like they, they assembled a boy band and said, I think I said that vampires. on my Facebook. Yeah. I think I said that on my Facebook a while ago and God damn, that was a mistake. Yeah. People well, just started jumping on me like, how dare you? And it's like, it's the same exact premise. Yeah. Like it was just a teenagers back, are different. Yeah. yeah. Back then we had like teen beat magazines where you could buy magazines of like celebrity boys, you know, like yeah, and looking Kiefer cool Sutherland stuff. was on them. And all those guys were, you know, in teen beat magazine and they kind of like closed their eyes and said, okay, give them sharp, give these bad boys sharp teeth and let's make a movie, you know, Cult- like culturally Corey, like, Corey Feldman, yeah. like everybody that was in that movie was just like a, you know, teen heartthrob. So I'll agree with you kind of from like a cultural and a thematic standpoint, but lost boys is a much better film. Well, of yeah. course it's, I mean, it's much more entertaining. Yeah, I tried to. I tried to like. I tried to watch Twilight and try to enjoy it. <laughs> I, I I'll try. I'll give anything a shot, man. I'll try yeah. anything. And it was yeah. to me like. And I hear the other the later movies get better, but the first one to me was almost unwatchable. Completely you know, unwatchable. Like, someone yeah, that works in a bookstore, you know, and I've you see that too, where like these memes where you have like forty year old people like sharing memes about like Blade killing Twilight. And stuff, and it's like, you're 40 years old like yeah Twilight wasn't made for you get over it like, right yeah yeah i, I had to learn that why yeah. adults take such you know offense to the movie like look what you're doing to my precious vampires and yeah like, no no it's a good point yeah, it's like, yeah. It, it wasn't made for you guess what it was it's successful because it was marketed to teens yeah. and it's a billion mm-hmm. dollar franchise yeah right so i did the soundtrack back in the day all the soundtracks and uh i got a screening to the first one, you know, before it came out and not knowing what twilight. Yeah. Not knowing the context of it or that it was a book or anything. And I was just like, I went and saw like the movie and I was like, fucking good luck. This is going to bomb. Stupid soundtrack, but no one's going to see this. And then, there I am doing like seven more for the next 10 years. Like, that was my job. I had, like, I had a full-time job just doing Twilight soundtrack packaging back then. It was ridiculous. Really? You did that? Yeah. Look so they're like, it's too exciting. What you submitted is too exciting. Dumb it down. Yeah. Make it, make it but, more bland. Then, just put the word Twilight it. on it. <laughs> and beyond what, you know, the, the really, you know, smart thing that you said, Jason, but about you know like it, it's not for 40 year olds but it mm. ended up being for a lot of 40 year old moms like my sure, mom yeah. went bananas like and and the fact that her son was like designing all, she still has all the records in vinyl yeah. like hanging up on her walls at home that's just a day man that's like, dedication. <laughs> but uh but my bigger the point i was gonna get to was that um the dude's a pedophile right i mean essentially Oh yes, in Twilight, one hundred percent. Yes, he's, he's like, like two hundred you know, years, years old. old, and he's going after a fourteen-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up, like yeah, you know, it's it's fucked up. Yeah, it's Absolutely. kind of like that. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, implied in that near dark. You know, when you have like that kid vampire who's like two hundred years old, and right, 
Which, but that, that the perspective of that is, yeah, they're blatantly saying it. Like that's mm-hmm. on the surface. Like same with interview like, with a vampire. Yeah, this yep, is the pitfall. The vampire, this is the yeah. pitfall of being a vampire. It does. It's not as romantic and and as sexy as you think. Imagine being in a child's body for hundreds of years and like how that affects you psychologically and your ability. I like I love walk that out into the sunlight. <laughs> oh, this is the complete opposite. This is like something they overlooked. You know, oh, yeah. I guess you know as a plot because like. And is it okay because he's 250 years old going after 14 year old? But if he was like, you know, 42, then it's really <laughs> awful, right? Well, they dealt with that on Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Angel too. Um, oh, did they? Yeah, the TV they, show really? or the movie? The TV show, and because okay. um, he's his has this love story with Buffy, who is like a high school sophomore or, or junior or something, mm-hmm. and he's a you know 200 year old vampire. Right. The, the um, but they do address it. Yeah, you know, like there's there's little moments of that, and then later they Buffy did a musical episode where there was a demon that was after Buffy's little sister, mm. and there's a it's then the musical episode. There's um, he wants to make her his queen, and she has a line that says, "Well, you see, I'm." 14 so this is not quite legal or something down and do this town so when we blow this scene back we will go to my kingdom below and you will be my queen cuz i know what you feel now you see you and me wouldn't be And they, they kind of do a little nod of that too. Um, yeah. But it is an interesting so it's thing. A, in the same breath, not to go down this whole rabbit hole, but you know, the same thing could be said in Labyrinth. Well, yeah, it's a staple of Gothic yeah. storytelling. <laughs> like a young woman. Like when I remember David yeah. Bowie, when David Bowie died and like, you know, these people like posting memes about the Goblin King and it's like, he did try to marry a 12 year old while kidnapping her baby's <laughs> brother. <Yeah. laughs> she asked for him to take that baby though. Far, far away. Um, but no, like Gothic storytelling, man, that's where you get that maiden, uh, in yeah. distress, you know, like it's, it's goes back to like the beginning of these, uh, these stories that we get all of this stuff from, it's almost always a teen girl mm-hmm. who is in some sort of peril from mm-hmm. an older man. And then like, you know, and a lot of times the hero is also an older man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, in that same breath though, I'm thinking about it now, this wasn't so, but I actually caught the tail end of Conan, the destroyer. Oh yeah. I love that on movie TV the other day. And yeah, like at the very Never end, when the uh, <laughs> when the girl like ask him to like be my queen, my be my king and rule my kingdom with me, and it's like you're like thirteen, and Schwarzenegger was like forty five at that point. Yeah, that was and Olivia like, Diabo nice at the end. Yeah, she was. Uh, like, I was a little bit like that kiss was a bit uncomfortable. She was what sixteen <laughs> or something when they made that, or fifteen. Yeah, yeah, and her yeah. character was supposed to be for sure. Her, yeah, yeah, her character was supposed to be like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, yeah. She's hot though. Can we all agree? There it is. There's <laughs> Freddie. Here we go. We're exposing them all. I was like Get it seven. All out of the light, Freddie. You got to understand that I was like seven when I saw that movie. So to and me, she was an, an older adult. woman. And now you're an adult. Am I so su- am therefore... I supposed to uh, am I supposed to deny that I have that thought in my head because I was. Uh, no, you're not supposed to deny it. You're not. You're just not supposed to continue it. I'm That's, not. Oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to is. continue yeah, it. It is. Yeah. You grow up, and then you say, "Oh yeah, when I was a child, I had a crush on her." Right. right. Yeah. Right. Um, but I no longer have a crush on this child. No, yeah, but I, I no longer refer to a child as hot. Uh, but I will tell you this: <laughs> she's not a child anymore. She's older than me, and she's still very hot. Olivia oh, Diabo. Me? I, went down. I was six years old when I saw this movie. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Here comes that echo again. It's not me. It's not me. At least I don't think it's me. Shouldn't be. It's fucking Jason. That was just you, Dave. Boom. Hello. Now, now, okay. Now I'm here. 
You better? Oh, there it is. I'm just going to stop talking now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sorry. Are you done picking on me for liking Olivia Diabo so much? He's just yes. shaking his head no. He's not done picking, but he can't speak because he can't stand the echo. Yeah, everything's fine as long as he doesn't talk. Yep, Olivia Diabo. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> just keep digging the hole, buddy. <laughs> she was in Star Wars uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Really? Mm-hmm. What was her role? She was a character called uh, Luminara Unduli. Oh, Luminari Unduli. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my nickname in high school. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What a coincidence. What are yep. the odds, even? Yeah. Does anyone know what that character actually did? No. I have no idea. She was in uh, Point of No Return, which was also a very good movie. La Femme Nikita. Yeah. I love La yeah. Femme Nikita. Yeah. Um, am I allowed to say that La Femme Nikita was hot? No. Was it an yes. adult? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, that was Bridget Fonda. Mm-hmm. Retired from acting famously. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. is it I really liked her in the 90s. Me too. I had a bit of a crush on her myself. In the 90s? Dave, really? Because she was yeah. only twenty years old. Wouldn't you say that that's um a well, little gross? I was gross. only fourteen, so I was like, <laughs> "She's a pedophile, not me." Yeah. To be fair, I always, when I was a kid, I always thought that the princess in um in Conan the Destroyer was uh much older. I couldn't, I didn't know any better. Yeah, I was. Well, six, it's funny that now Jason. that we're older and you go back and watch these movies and you see these people that you saw as adults as kids. Yeah, and then now you're like, oh, they're fucking children. Yeah, it's really weird. It is weird. It's yeah. super weird because like I got older and they stayed the same age as Matthew McConaughey. That's right. Say. Yeah. Dave's wow. Right. There is there there's just a lot coming to light. On yeah, this yeah. Oh yeah, we're this weirdos. Is the creepy and, old man episode. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue this so that I don't get taken down with it i do not support it you don't support <laughs> it. it is wrong what about uh if you got to think of it like this i was like a little anakin skywalker mm-hmm. and olivia diabo was like my um natalie portman yeah that was a strange scenario as well <laughs> think about it it was Stuff. a very very strange scenario kind of icky right i mean it's been pointed out by many people how achy yes. that is. Uh, yeah. and that takes, Almost like the incest in the original trilogy. That too. I feel like uh, we're absolved of, um, of all wrongdoing because Padme was a creep. How about that meme, though? It's a good one. Which meme is that? It's fucking Darth Sidious and Darth Vader sitting together at the uh, fucking oh, opera. Yes, the, and <laughs> Darth Sidious is us. like, he's like, uh, someday... Our daughters, no, our children are going to kiss. How's it go? <laughs> They're going to kiss each other? Yeah. Should we kiss now? Yeah. Should we kiss now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. I'd love to talk more, but this echo is driving me insane. That's okay. Yeah, me too. I I can't even understand what you're saying. Are you serious? Yeah, and then I hear myself back now too. That is so weird. That is so weird. Because I I've reset my mic and my audio, so I know it's not happening on my end. So you didn't have that problem in the beginning of the show. No. Mm-mm. But no, it always happens at the tail end. That is bizarre, man. Yeah. The tail it end. Is. Hold on, let me try something. He's trying something, guys. Hold tight. Hello. Hello. Nope, there it is. It's better, though. Oh, no, I hear myself crackling. But both of you guys are listening with headphones, right? Yeah. Huh. This is uh, fascinating, I'm sure, for the listeners. Yeah. 
Maybe we should just uh, call it early if if the echo is driving you guys crazy. Unfortunately, yeah, I think so. All right, but thank you for listening, y'all. Uh, of our abbreviated Night of the Comic uh, Olivia Diablo Tribute Edition slash. It's wrong, Joel Schumacher, and I'm against it. You're against <laughs> Olivia Diablo, <laughs> and I'm against it. Uh, yeah, that's you what know what the Bible for. says about that. You know. No. That it's a okay. It says it's against it. It's <sighs> against it. <laughs> it has a lot of apostrophes in it. So it's against it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, we'll reconvene later in the week, I suppose. Okay. Where we'll pick up, talk about Olivia Diabo, her work between the years of 1984 and 1986 when we lost the retrospective. Interest. Yeah. Uh, we're going to regret this. All right. 